Welcome to uh, the afternoon, the last session of the mock trial here in St. Clair County. At this time, I'm going to um, ask the participants to just uh, introduce themselves uh, for us, please. And we'll start with the plaintiff's side here. Uh, I am Jamie Smedley. And what part are you going to be playing? Uh, I'm the plaintiff attorney. Okay. I'm Jenny Lee, and I will be directing Hayden Blair, which is Megan Lelucci. I'm Gwen Allen, and I will be directing the plaintiff in this case, Jamie Smith, which is played by Savannah Sonic. All right. Do the witnesses want to introduce themselves? Oh, my name is Janine Moses, and I'm playing Sydney Ampleforth. Okay. My name is Megan Rosinski, and I'm portraying Hayden Blair. My name is Savannah Senek, and I'm portraying Jamie Smith. All right, and defense? May it please the court, Gabby Flynn, lead trial counsel for the defendants in this case, Lake Shore Computers Incorporated and Cool Tech Service Incorporated. I will be directing Reese Charrington, as portrayed by Grace McGee. <clears throat> May it please the court, Anne Marie Taylor, in house counsel for defendant, Cool Tech Corporation. I will be directing, examining Morgan Parsons. Portrayed by Cassie Beals. May I please the court? AO Star, in house counsel for defendant for the defense. Um, I will be a direct, direct examining Jamie Smith. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pat O'Brien, as portrayed by Brooklyn Smith. All right. And the witnesses just want to introduce yourselves for us, please. I'm Cassie Beals, and I'm playing Morgan Parsons. Um, I'm Brooklyn Smith, and I'm playing Pat O'Brien. I'm Grace McGee, and I'm playing Reese Charrington. All right. Now I'm going to ask the, the scoring judges uh, and the bailiff to uh, introduce themselves for you so that uh, you have some idea of where they're coming from when they give you the comments and remarks at the end. I'll start with the bailiff. Don Fleming, 10 years at Corrections, which means I've worked at the jail the whole time for the 10 years. Enjoyed it so far. Part time high school umpire. I recognize some of the faces from last year and the year before. This is my fifth year doing this. Good luck today in the United States if you go out. Sheriff Donald? Good afternoon and uh, welcome, uh, Sheriff Donald. Like Judge Brown said, uh, I'm my 27th year at the Sheriff's Office, uh, last seven as Sheriff. And I uh, truly enjoy seeing uh, uh, the students come here today. Um, a lot of times in our positions, we'll see kids professionally maybe when they're into a situation that's not on their best day. So today is, is just a wonderful day to see the best of the best of the future kids in St. Clair County. So uh, congratulations for all the hard work you put to get here because we know how much work it takes to do this. And good job. That's great. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the last round. I'm sure you're all very excited. My name is Erica Kern. I'm a local attorney. I practice civil law. And I look forward to seeing your cases today. Mr. Uh, good afternoon. Congratulations on being here. I know you worked very hard. My name is Greg Stremmers. I've been practicing here in St. Clair County for 22 years. I've tried a lot of cases in this courtroom, so I know what you're going through and a little bit of nerves. But I know you've been through two very good rounds so far, so we look forward to seeing you in, in this round. I'm Judge Elwood Brown, and I am a local um, elected judge here in St. Clair County. And I am in my 36th year as a lawyer. My first uh, 17 of those I spent in the prosecuting attorney's office, 10 as, a pro as an assistant prosecutor and 7 as the elected prosecutor. And uh, since 1999, I've been a family court judge. My, judge, my courtroom is just on the other side over here. This is not my normal courtroom. The, uh, as a family court judge, I deal with uh, juvenile delinquency, abuse and neglect cases, and family law, such as divorce and custody and matters of that nature. So I've spent my pretty much my entire career in the courtroom, either as an advocate, a litigant, or as a judge. So I, uh, I'm familiar with the role you're playing. I understand the work it took to get here. And I look forward to hearing you uh, present to us. With that, I will call the case to order. It is the in the matter of Jamie Smith versus Lakeshore Computers, Inc. and Cool Tech Services, Inc. Are the parties ready to proceed, Plaintiff? Yes. Defendant? Yes, Your Honor, but before we begin, there's a preliminary matter we believe needs to be attended to. According to Stipulation 7, this trial is bifurcated, which means the jury is only supposed to consider the liability in this case 
and the damages will be addressed in a separate hearing and we would like the jury to be instructed as so All right. stipulations will stand as stipulated uh, you may give uh, your opening statement uh, your honor before I begin my opening statement I would like to request permission for my co-counsel and I to move freely about the courtroom no okay thank you reminds me of the story of the Trojan War, specifically about the, the story about the Trojan horse. A saying came out of this, this story, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Now, in this case, uh, Lakeshore computers are the Greeks, and theft track put on computers is the, is the Trojan horse. And the cool tech employees uh, used the Trojan horse to go into the private lives of students at Western High School. The Cool Tech Services used the Trojan horse to ruin a poor girl's life. Uh, my defend my client, uh, Jamie Smith. Uh, when whenever this once carefree girl leaves the house, she wonders if one of the many employees allowed in her bedroom through theft track are the people on the street smiling at her or, or laughing at her because of what they saw. She can no longer trust the Greeks. Uh, good morning, Your Honor, uh, members of the jury. Uh, I am Jamie Smithy and I'm here with my co-counsel Gwen Allen and Jenny Lee. Our client, Jamie Smith, is suing Lakeshore and Cool Tech because Jamie's privacy has been breached through a computer recovery software theft track. Uh, when, when in use, Theft track takes pictures and screenshots uh, on the computer. We have the burden of proof, and we will prove beyond a preponderance of evidence that the that Lakeshore violated my client and tipped the scales of justice, and in fact have the burden of proof. Um, employees of Cooltech and Lakeshore uh, breached the contract by holding weekly peep shows uh, on the weekends with snacks and adult beverages. The peep shows in this case are not what you are thinking. They are peep show dioramas uh, innocently made by my client. Jamie is a recent graduate. She now attends community college in her hometown. Toward the beginning of her senior year, uh, Jamie turned 18. Uh, this is a big transition that we will all experience as an adult. As a young adult, you get to vote, uh, move on to college, and sign contracts all by yourself. Our client, in her own words, was excited for these prospects of playing around with new technology and turning 18. Because of this breach, my client has, has endured. She has gen uh, general anxiety, just distrust for her peers, and most of all, she feels violated by this experience. Our three witnesses will, that we will present to you, the duty of Lakeshore, the breach committed by Lakeshore, and the damage by Jamie Smith. Sydney Ampleforth, a teacher at Western High School, will give you the rundown on one-to-one -one theft track and her findings on the program. Hayden Blair, uh, which was a former employee of uh, Lakeshore and Cool Tech, uh, will show you the breach that was committed by them. And Jamie Smith will give, uh, give you her damages and tell you how she never signed a contract that said to spy on her. Jamie needs your compassion in this case. Jamie has been drastically changed by this experience. We have likened theft track to the Trojan horse which allowed Cool Tech employees into her bedroom via webcam and changed her life forever. Jamie Smith needs monetary compensation in order to, to uh, put herself through college and for therapy. Thank you. The defense wish to give their opening statement now or reserve it till the proofs?
ladies and gentlemen of the jury. This is a case about ingratitude and in getting something for nothing. This is also a case about responsibility. I say ingratitude because Miss Smith got a free laptop from Lakeshore Computers. She, she, who that she insisted on treating as her own. And she refused to comply with the terms and conditions she had to agree to and without paying the $60 insurance fee. And I say responsibility because the evidence will show that any alleged harm that she complains of was a result of her own actions. A little bit later today, Reese Sherrington will tell you about herself. She's going to tell you that she grew up here. She went to high school here. She started her own business in her hometown of Carroll County. Miss Sherrington will also tell you she has a soft spot for computers. As a kid, she, instead of going out with the other kids, she stayed in her barn and worked on creating a new comp computer design. Miss Sherrington will tell you that she left for Silicon Valley, California, right after high school to work in the computer industry. She later moved to Oregon and started one of the leading pro laptop PC programs in the world. But Miss Sherrington was homesick. She missed Carroll County. So she changed the corporate mission of her, comp of her computer industry to the competing services to the rural America. She no longer wears her hair up and teases her hair and wears the bright neon clothes, but instead she brought back the corporate, she brought back, <laughs> she's all a bit, in addition to Miss Sherrington, you will also hear from Pat O'Brien, the principal of Western High School in Carroll County. He will tell you that he was concerned with urban high schools getting the opportunity to experience new technology without him. Of course, Ms. She he asked for help from <clears throat> Ms. Sherrington. Of course, she agreed. She provided free laptops to all the Western High School students. However, the laptops were main property of Lakeshore and its subsidiary. They just had to pay a $60 insurance fee. And finally, if the laptops were reported stolen, there was a loss prevention software that would be, ab but that would be activated. So why are we here? We are here because one student, Jamie Smith, is suing Lakeshore and Cool Tech Services. Not the PTO, not the principal, not the other students at Western High School, only Jamie Smith. Lakeshore intends to prove to your satisfaction three defenses to this lawsuit. First, that any invasion has been, been sustained by the plaintiff was the result of the plaintiff's own actions. The evidence will show that the only reason that the theft track was operated because she lied and reported it stolen. Second, that Jamie Smith consented to any alleged invasion. The evidence will show that Jamie Smith purposely plotted a bomb threat of blowing up the school. And finally, the third defense will provide evidence that any alleged harm was caused by an employee, Hayden Blair, was not under Ms. Sherrington's control and not within Hayden Blair's scope of employment. Ms. Sherrington had no idea Hayden Blair was throwing parties at, his ho at her home, and when she did, she fired her immediately. At the end of this trial, his honor will tell you what the law is. He will tell you if we prove any one of these three things, you will have to find for us. And when you have heard, an, when you have heard the evidence that we will present to you, we will ask you to tell the plaintiff, enough is enough. You have to pay for what you want. It is time to stop getting something for nothing from the people of Carroll County. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, exercise my prerogative as a presiding judge and ask that you, uh, the plaintiff, begin with their second witness, then the third witness, and then go to the first witness. And the defense can respond in that fashion. Okay? Everybody fine with that? All right, you may call uh, witness Hayden Blair. The plaintiff calls Hayden Blair to the stand. Please state your name for the record. My name is Hayden Blair. What was your connection to Lakeshore Computers and Cool Tech Services? I worked for Lakeshore for five years prior to being fired, and I also worked for Cool Tech. What is your history with Lakeshore Computers and Cool Tech? I started working for Lakeshore in 2007, right after graduating Reed College. They wanted to move their headquarters to uh, Lakeview, so I had nothing to tie me down, and I went. Were you employed separately with both Lakeshore and Cool Tech? Yes. 
What have you been doing since then? I've been offering my computer expertise on a um, consulting basis on contract with a few healthcare companies and insurance companies. When did you start working for Lakeshore Computers? In 2007. What was the one-to-one -one program? The one-to-one -one program was, well, Lakeshore and the school, Western, Western High School, uh, implemented to give each student a laptop. Did you have a part in the decision making for this program? No, that was made higher up. What is Theft Track? Theft Track is a computer theft recovery uh, system. What are the details of Theft Track? Whenever uh, Western High School's IT department sent in um, a request to activate Theft Track, we would use that to you activate theft track and use the LAN or IP addresses or basically GPS for computers. And we would also access the webcam capabilities and the screenshot capabilities to help further the locating process. And the information we gathered, the useful information, we would send to the school's IT department for them to further the recovery process. When would you activate that track? Only on request from the school. When would you get this type of request? Whenever a student uh, reported it lost, missing, or stolen. What would the steps in the recovery process be? We would get notification from the school. Then we would activate theft track, take all the useful information we would get from theft track, and then send it to the school. Were the high number of activation requests overwhelming? I was very, it was very overwhelming. There were a lot of activation requests. How did you handle these amount of requests? I went to Reese Charrington to see uh, what could be done about the situation. She told me, uh, I suggested overtime and she granted me this, granted me uh, it. And when we were reaching our overtime budget, which we did often, I went back to her with the situation and this time she suggested that we get volunteers. How did you get so many people to volunteer? Well, I started having parties to encourage people to come. What happened at these parties? Well, we would look through the pictures and find which one was the funniest and put it in a slideshow. My fav personally, my favorite one were these peep shows. They were, they were crazy. Some, someone put uh, dioramas of these marshmallow peeps to represent movie scenes. <coughs> Like, there was Harry Peeper, uh, Lord of the Peeps, and various other types. Does Miss Charrington ever imply that she knew anything about these weekend rituals? From one incident, she did imply it. What happened on this incident? Well, on April 14th, uh, I was looking through an account, and I saw this picture, but... I thought it was pretty obsolete. But later on in the same account, I saw uh, an IM screenshot of what looked like two people planning to blow up the school. So I went back to the picture and look, took a closer look at it, and it looked like to be there were bomb-making materials in it. Now, were these actions in the scope of your employment? Yes. And were your actions necessary? I believe so, yes. Now, we're, while we're on the topic of bomb threats, did you know anything <coughs> about the ongoing bomb threats at the school? Anyone who lived around Western High School knew. What do you hope to happen after all this is over? I hope that I would go back to work for Lakeshore. I feel that I've been wrongfully blamed in all of this. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Are you cross-examined? Yes, Your Honor.
Well, would you start by just giving me your, the names on these are not filled out as a cross examination. So can you give me your name, please? I'm Amber Taylor. All right, Ms. Taylor, go ahead. Good afternoon. Is it a true statement that you were under strict instructions not to deactivate the theft track system until you received the proper notification from the school to do so? Correct. You were aware of the ongoing situation with bond threats that occurred in your town, correct? Anyone who lived there knew about them. Yes or no? Yes. You told your group to be on the lookout for any evidence that might help the cops or feds catch whoever was pulling these pranks. I'm sorry, could you please restate the question? You told your group to be on the lookout for any evidence that might help the cops or feds catch whoever was pulling these pranks. Yes. And you did this on your own intensive. You received no direct request from Reese or other executives at your company to do this. Is that true? No, but any reasonable, prudent person would do so. And at this get-together you had on Friday, Saturday nights at your house that you called the Weekly Western Festival, is it a true statement that Reese had no idea this was going on? Well, he, she... Yes or no? Was as far as I know, she implied it. Is it a true statement that shortly after the bond threat, Reese Charlton fired you? You had to blame someone. Yes or no? Yes. Thank you, Anna, no for the question. Redirect? Yes. Were you ever personally told by anyone to look for the bomb threat? What? Were you ever personally told by anyone to look for bomb threat evidence? No, but any reasonable, prudent person would do so. Now, how did Ms. Charrington tell you to handle the situation of the activation requests? She told me to think creatively. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Now, uh, you prepared to call Jamie Smith? Please state your name for the court. My name is Jamie Smith. And what do you do for a living? Well, um, right now I'm currently taking classes at Lakeview Community College, but I'm a recent graduate of Western High School. And were you attending Western High School in the fall of 2011? Yes, I was. Were you a part of the one-to-one -one program? Yes. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, the school had decided to give us all computers, which was so great because I've never had a computer of my own. So I got to take home this computer to do like schoolwork and um, take notes and basically do assignments on it. Did you receive any kind of information about this program? There was this assembly, but they went through the slideshows very quickly and afterwards gave us a brochure. Did you sign a contract in order for you to receive this computer? Yes, I did. Did you read the contract before you signed it? I skimmed through it. Was there any other written documentation? There was a brochure, but there was nothing about spying on me either, on either of these two documents. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, let the, I'd like to let the record reflect I'm showing opposing counsel. Propose exhibits three and four. Would you like a courtesy copy? Why don't you show it to me? All right, you may show the counsel. You may. Thank you. I'm going to direct your attention to Exhibit 3 for the moment. What is this document? It's the brochure that was given out after the assembly. And have you ever seen this before? Yes, I have. And has it been altered in any way since the day you saw it? No. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to move that Exhibit 3 be entered into evidence. Its authenticity has been stipulated. Any objection? Oh, Jackson Shoney. I'll receive Exhibit 3. All right. And um, now if you would take a look at Exhibit 4. What is this document? It's the Lakeshore Monitoring Notice insert to the brochure. And have you ever seen this document before? No, I've never seen this. Well, that's strange. Wasn't it supposed to be included in the brochure? 
It says it was, but I've never seen this before. Thank you, Jamie. Will you please point out to the jury where in Exhibit 3 it mentions anything about the program Theft Track? It doesn't say anything about Theft Track in this. Do you recall any type of verbal explanation of a system known as Theft Track presented to you? No. Well, that's pretty generous of Lakeshore to just give you a laptop. Were there any guidelines for these laptops? Well, there was an insurance payment, but I thought it was an extended warranty, and I know better than to fall for those. Why are we here today, Jamie? Well, I was told that I had the opportunity to be given a free computer, which was great because I've never had a computer before. And it sounded like I kind of had to have one to do assignments, and the teachers were going to assign them on a computer. Well, when I took it home, I realized that there was a green light flashing on it. Little did I know that later, a company was spying on me in my own home and, like, invading my personal okay, space. Sustained. Uh, can, may I move on, Jeremy? You may. Okay. Did you discuss this with any of your peers? Yes, I, um, I talked about it with my friend, um, Petey. She was really paranoid about the whole thing and shoved her... Uh, Your Honor, I'm not asking for direct quotes, um, I'm, and I'm also not using it to prove the truth of the matter, of the matter, just that the matter was asserted. Overruled. Did you discuss this with any of your peers? Yes, like I said, I discussed it with PD, and she became really paranoid about it and shoved the laptop under her bed. Did you notify any of the staff of your concerns? I didn't personally talk to anybody, but a few of my te my um, a few of my peers talked to one of my teachers, Mrs. Ampleforth. And she contacted people, but they never responded to her. Did you, under, did you ever lend your laptop to anyone? Yes. Um, how I said earlier that my friend Petey, she shoved it under her bed. Well, since she didn't have hers, I was a good friend, and I decided that I'd let her use mine. And during that same day, my teacher wanted me to use mine in a, on an assignment, and since I didn't have it, I told her I'd lost it. Did you ever report this as missing? Um, yes, I did. Did you ever fill out a found form? Yes, but after I filled out the found form and I told my... Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't fill out a found form. I only filled out a missing form. I'm sorry. So you never filled out a found form for your laptop? No, my, my teacher told me that she would go and take matters into her own hands and she called people, but nothing else, was ha nothing else happened. Now, Jamie, what can you tell us about the peep shows you created? Well, we wanted to show, who, we wanted to see if people were actually spying on us and put this to an end. So we told them that we were on to them if they were actually spying on us. We got these, um, we got these kind of boxes or, um, we made these um, displays and put them in front of the, in front of the camera and they were little peeps, little candy peeps that we put inside of them and made movies, like little fake movie snapshots, like Lord of the Peeps, Harry Peeper. My favorite was How the Peeps Stole Christmas. And we thought that if someone was spying on us, they would know that we were onto them and maybe get a few laughs out of it. It's kind of a win-win situation. Was there anything else you did to try to eliminate the possibility of any spies? Yes, this one sounds kind of bad, but it was, I was being clever. My friend and I, we decided that we wanted to stop this once and for all. And if they were spying on us, we wanted to know for sure if they were. So we decided to have this plot to make it look like we were making a bomb. I searched up a few things, scattered a few things in front of the webcam, and we had an IM conversation. But we just wanted, we wanted to get down to the bottom of it and put this to an end. And what evidence of spying were you able to, able to find through your investigation? Well, when I walked into school the next Monday morning, before I could even open my locker, my principal, Mrs. O'Brien, stopped me in front of my peers and took me down to her office. She started yelling at me and telling me that she suspected it was me all along. And she pulled out these pictures of my room and that's when I knew they were spying on me. How did the knowledge of being spied on make you feel? I'm completely paranoid. I can't go outside without thinking that people around me have seen me online or have seen pictures of me. And once things are on the internet, it can't be taken off. And I'm just so scared. People could be laughing at my pictures right now. All right, Your Honor, uh, may I approach the bench with proposed exhibit two? Yes. Let the record reflect 
can show you good example. May I touch the witness? You may. Jamie, what is this document? It's the computer lease agreement between um, Lakeshore Computer Incorporated and I. Have you ever seen this document before? Yes, I have. Is that your signature at the bottom of this? Yes, it is. And has it been altered in any way since the day that you signed it? No. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I would ask that proposed exhibit to be entered into evidence. Its authenticity has been stipulated. Any objection? No objection. I receive exhibit two. Is this the contract that you were given by Lakeshore Computers? Yes, it is. Who is this contract between? Lakeshore and I. Was Cooltech any part of this contract? No. Is there a section of this contract that discusses the monitoring notice? Yes, there is. Would you please show the jury where it states that Lakeshore Computers has the right to activate a system known as Theft Track? Doesn't say anything on this contract about Theft Track. And would you please also point out where in the contract it states that Lakeshore Computers could access your webcam? Doesn't say anything. And finally, would you please point out where in the contract it gives Cool Tech the right to access any part of your laptop? There's nothing on here about that. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross examine. Yes, May I approach the witness to receive my documents? Just leave them there for now. Do you recall, according to the school assembly, that your school put on to discuss the details of one-to-one -one program? Yes, I do. They gave a power slideshow at that presentation, didn't they? Yeah, but it went by really fast. So you just tuned that out that assembly. N nobody around me was paying attention. You previously said that you thought it was just pretty boring. It, it was pretty boring. In fact, during the assembly, you messed around on your phone, correct? So everyone else around me also messed around with their phone, and no faculty member ever stopped us from doing so. So you tend to do what others do? Um, no, but... Were you I taking pictures with your phone? Um, yet. Yes or no? Yes, yes I was. Sending IMs to your friends? Yes, I was. In fact, you're even updating your Facebook with just random stuff, right? Yes. It's also a fair statement that after the assembly, they handed out brochures, and they sent them specifically to have your parents take home to sign? The brochures? Yes. Yes. And you didn't show them to your parents, did you? Um, no, but I'm 18, so. So you signed all the paperwork, right? I signed all the paperwork by myself. In your previous statement, you stated you just looked at the places where you had to sign and just signed them without reading, correct? Um, well, I looked for the places where I had to sign and kind of skimmed through the places that I had to sign. So you signed it without reading, right? I skimmed through it. Yes or no, you signed it without reading, correct? I, I looked through it, uh, yes. After you received your laptop, your, your teacher, Sydney Ampleforth, asked specifically about your insurance payment, did she not? Yes, she did. And you refused the insurance payment. You said you wouldn't make it, isn't that true? I thought it was an extended warranty, and I know better than to fall for those. In your previous statement, you said it was a scam. Yes, I thought it was. Isn't it also true that Ms. Ampleforth told you you would not be able to take your computer home if you did not fill out the insurance program? Thing? She did, but they let me take it home anyways. And nobody ever stopped me from taking it home. Because you lied, correct? Uh, objection, no. Your Honor. Uh, you cannot show uh, actions of the witness to prove character. Argument I'll rephrase response. the question. No, uh, the objection's overruled. The witness, the question simply was about what she did now, not about her character from you in the past. Thank you. You thought it was your laptop, didn't you? Um, yes. Since you thought it was your laptop, you didn't see any problem with carrying it back to back and forth to school every day. Well, I was told that the school had given these laptops to us for free. And you were also told you had to sign a $6 insurance fee to take it home, correct? Yes, but once I didn't... Thank you. No. Other people mentioned that you didn't have insurance and you shouldn't take it home, but you blew them off, didn't you? Um, yes, but I still took it home and nobody said anything. Isn't it also true, in addition to the assembly, and you continued your conversation with Simi Ampleforth, there was a series of mandatory classes you had to attend to? Yes, but it was all basic stuff that everyone already knew. When shown how to use the laptops, you didn't really pay attention to that series of mandatory classes, did you? I already knew everything, and that was taught. Did you or did you not? No, I didn't. You stated previously you were downloading music, updating Facebook, IMing friends during these mandatory classes. Isn't that true? Yes, I did. In fact, when you lab got the laptop, you tampered with it and put all your social media on it, correct? Yes, but so did everyone else. 
You do admit that you took off the parent school blocks and a little bit of goofing around with the computer, correct? Yes, but nobody ever stopped us. No faculty I asked ever said you, anything. I asked you what you did, not what everybody else did. Well, I did it. In fact, you were able else. to get the webcam working on all the other social media running too after fooling around with the computer and taking off the blocks, correct? Yes, but it wasn't hard to do. Were you aware that other people had raised some concern about the green webcam flickering on and off? Yes, I was. In fact, Ms. Ampleforth addresses at the school, did she not? Yes, but once she talked to faculty about it, nobody ever told her to do anything, and nobody In ever answered her you. concerns. In fact, she told the students when she had, what she had done was put a piece of duct tape over it, correct? Yes, but that doesn't really solve the problem. It just kind of hides it. So you didn't put any duct tape on your camera. You just let it slide, correct? Cause you... No, I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I wasn't going to hide the problem. You want to talk to your friends, correct? Yes. Back to the incident in March. Is it true that you gave Petey your laptop to borrow? Yes, I did. I'm a good friend, and I lent it to her. Is it also true that the same day Miss Ampleforth had assigned you an assignment to do on your computer, you didn't have it? Yes. When she asked you where your laptop was, you lied to her and told you that you might have lost it over break. I rescued my friend, yes. So you lied? Yes. You even filled out a form stating that your laptop was lost and you turned it into the school, did you not? Yes, but I never filled out a found form afterwards. When Petey gave you the laptop back the next day, you told Miss Ampleforth she you had found it. Isn't that true? Yes, but they never took matters into their own hand afterwards, which was told, which I was told was going to be done. And who told you that? Mrs. Ampleforth said that she would con she would contact people. That's and weird. I went through your statement that you took, and I know where it says that. Do you remember giving a statement before coming to court? Yes. Would you like to look at it to refresh your memory? No, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. So. <clears throat> In your statement, you just remember filling out the lost form. Correct? Yes. Let the record ref may I approach the bench, which has been already marked into evidence as Exhibit Two. Yeah. May I approach the witness, you mean? Oh, yes. You may. Thank you. Can you please tell me what this is? It's the computer lease agreement between Lakeshore and I. And do you recognize it? Yes. Is that your name at the bottom? Yes, it is. And what this allowed you to do? It allowed me to take the um, laptop. So the terms and conditions you had to read and sign and you had to comply with, correct? Yes. Have you read this? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Can you please read um, paragraph one of the lease agreement? Yes. Lease the computer. Lakeshore leases the computer to the students for no charge. If the student would like to take the laptop off school grounds, there is a $60 insurance deposit. Students are responsible for the purchase of expendable supplies, such as paper, removable disks, print cartridges, etc. Miss Smith, did you ever pay the insurance deposit? No, I didn't. And isn't it true that, in fact, you did take the laptop off school grounds every single day? Yes, I did, but nobody stopped me. So would you agree that me if you were not in compliance with paragraph 1? Um, yes, I would. Would you please read paragraph 5A to the jury? The, the student will cause the computer to be operated only in accordance with applicable, applicable instructions provided by Lakeshore's representatives or the manufacturer of the computer and shall not modify the computer in any way. Ms. Smith, isn't it true that you tampered with it and put all your social media on it? Yes, I did, and so did many other people, and no precautions. Ms. Smith, I'm asking you. I'm not asking what everyone else did. Yes. So you do, is it true that you ignored paragraph 5A just like paragraph 1? I did, but Lakeshore never told me they Thank were going you. to spy on me, so they ignored the contract also. May I approach the bench, which has been proposed as marked Exhibit 8? Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is it? It's the um, lost form that I had to sign. Is that your name at the bottom? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'd like to move Exhibit 8 into evidence. Objection. Uh, lack of foundation. It's been stipulated, too, so the foundation's not necessary. 
Okay. It uh, will be received in evidence. Just to clarify, you marked this loss, though you didn't lose it, correct? Yes. Can you please indicate to the jury which box you had signed at the bottom of that? Lost or stolen? Lost. Can you please show that to the jury? And in fact, it was not lost. You knew where it was the entire time, correct, Ms. Smith? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Can you direct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, you stated today that you, um, is it true that you did not pay the insurance form? Yes, it is true. And why was that? Because I thought it was an extended warranty. So you've also testified today that you thought it was a scam, right? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, also, you've also testified today that you weren't really paying attention during the assemblies because it was all the same information, correct? Yes, I already knew everything that was given. And um, do you agree that certain people can do more than one thing at once? Yes, I'm very good at multitasking. I can pat my head and rub my tummy at the same time also. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Right, you may step down. Call your next witness. Uh, we would like to call Sydney Ampleforth to the stand. Please state your name for the record. My name is Sydney Ampleforth. What do you do for a living? I am a teacher at Western High School in Lakeview Superior. How long have you been teaching at Western High? Six years. Uh, what did you do before teaching at Western? I was a computer science teacher in Mittens and Superior, and I taught at the high school and community college. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to have this witness entered as an, in as an expert in the field of computer sciences. Uh, the uh, reasonably referred by the case materials was that uh, because she is a, a teacher, she has a teaching degree, as well as because she's a computer science teacher, she must have a computer science major. Well, that's a good effort at um, laying a foundation. However, it's not uh, she doesn't meet the qualifications of an expert, so okay. your request is uh, denied. Okay. How do you know our client, Jamie Smith? She was my student. Uh, have you been assigned any extra duties at Western? Yes, sometimes. I was asked by Pat O'Brien to be part of the review panel for the proposed one-to-one -one program. Why do you think you were chosen for the review panel? Uh, Pat asked me to because of my expertise in computer science. What is the one-to-one -one program? Uh, the one-to-one -one program is a program for students to receive students and staff to receive laptops. What was your initial impression of the one-to-one -one program? I thought it was a really good idea. Our students are digital natives being brought from the 20th to the 21st century. I only had a few privacy well, concerns about the issue. What were those concerns? Um, about privacy issues, really, and uh, I was assured by the company that the program was secure and hacker-proof and the content on the computers were regulated by the school and students, and I should have been aware of Greeks bearing gifts. <laughs> can, can you elaborate on that, please? Well, the gifts being the laptops given to the school, they are the Trojan horse, and inside are the Greeks, the company being waiting to invade our homes. What did you initially know theft know about uh, theft, uh, What did you initially know about theft track, the Trojan horse? Um, I assumed it was a low chat, a low jack system or a GPS for computers. 
Was that an accurate assumption? No. When did you learn that this assumption was when it was inaccurate? Students brought to my attention about this green flickering light on their laptops. Oh, uh, when when did this happen? September twenty second, two thousand eleven. Uh, I would like to approach the bench with what has been proposed as Exhibit Nine. May I approach the witness? Can you identify this, please? This is an email thread between Reese Sherrington, Pat O'Brien, and I. Uh, has this been changed in any way since you last saw it? No. Uh, I would like to uh, enter Exhibit 9 as um, evidence. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. I receive Exhibit 9. Um, can you read what Mr. Charrington uh, sent to you, please? The tracking feature does not do things like record web browsing, chatting, email or any other type of spyware features that you might be thinking of. The police state concern is certainly a valid one, but I assure you that we are in no way, shape, or form employ any of these tactics, especially with computers of the network. Uh, this was the... No. Uh... Uh... And this, and what information made you understand that this program was more than a mere GPS? When he stated that it does more than just locate the laptops. Thank you. Now, what happened when you questioned the principal, Pat O'Brien, about the program? He said not to take it any further because he was afraid that Mr. or well, Mrs. Miss Charrington would take the computers and go home. What did you do personally with your web camera? Put a piece of duct tape over it because I was tired of the situation of asking and I suggested the same to students. What other actions did you take in regards to your privacy concerns? I asked about the I asked about how these laptops would benefit us, but the benefits were greater than the issues. Pat asked you to, do, to conduct an internal investigation, and uh, what can you tell me about how theft track was used according um, to that investigation? 40, about more than 40% of the pictures uh, recovered on there were from a day or two after, on average, after the laptop was found, and in some cases a week or so, or a while after this laptop was found. Uh, thank you. No further questions. Cross examination? Yes, sir. You and other staff members of the high school met with Reese Charrington and other experts from Lakeshore to discuss the details and specification for the laptop program. Is that correct? Correct. At that meeting, you also discussed the programs and softwares that would be loaded onto the computers. Is that true? Yes. Is it also true that you discussed the policies that they envisioned employees to regulate the computer usage? Yes. Did you ask a lot of questions about the capabilities of the laptops? We asked some, but Reese didn't want to ask too much. I mean, not Reese. Pat didn't want to ask too much because he was afraid, she was afraid, that 
Reese was going to take the computers and go home. So instead of finding out all of the information about the laptops, you were you decided to play it safe and just not learn all the information. We got most of the information we wanted and needed. There wasn't any further questions we really wanted to ask. Furthermore, you and other staff members asked a number of questions about the parental style blocks that would be Im implemented, correct? Correct. Isn't it true that you additionally met with Reese Charrington at a later time to learn more about the one-to-one -one program and more about the theft, prote theft protection? This is true. In those meetings, you learned the specifics on how theft track worked, correct? Correct. After meeting several times with people from Lakeshore, the staff then held several meetings with parents and students to go over policies and protocols, correct? Correct. During these sessions, you explained the insurance provisions and contracts that needed to be take, taken home and signed, correct? Correct. In these sessions, you further laid out the policy for, for reporting missing computers. Yes. Isn't it also a true statement that during these sessions, you told students very generally that there was a policy in place for locating the lost or stolen laptop, laptops? Yes. And that they would have to fill out forms to let Lakeshore find their laptops? Yes. And there were mandatory sessions the students had to attend to, correct? Correct. But by your own admission, the staff was lax in their oversight. I don't know how I was supposed to regulate how all, chill, how all the, the students were supposed to obtain this knowledge. It's we couldn't force them exactly to do this. Well, there were no sign-in sheets, were there? No. And there was no attendance taken at these? No. And you never quizzed or tested the students about their understanding of the laptops or the programs on the laptops? Why should we? It's a program that is intended. They should have been listening throughout the thing. It's not our duty to give them tests on something they should have been paying attention to. Well, isn't that what you would do in a classroom? Wouldn't you give a, te wouldn't you give a test to students who may not have been paying attention to quiz their knowledge and understanding of the stuff you taught in class? The classroom is different than the program. The program was an opportunity given to them. The classroom was is a different situation. Well, a classroom is an opportunity to learn something from their educational point of view. Same with all these programs. They are giving an opportunity to learn about the computers that they are going to be using and the programs that are going to be on them. Isn't that correct? Correct. Okay. Is it true that the, stu the students were told that any issues they had with the computers were supposed to be brought up with the IT department? Yes. And it was also true that if there was a problem you and the other IT personnel could not understand or fix, you would forward it to the Cool Tech Services? Yes. Isn't it also true there became an issue with the flickering green light by the webcam? Yes. Is it a fair statement to say that after a number of times trying to fix this and get to the bottom of it, you gave up and told them to put a piece of duct tape over the webcam? Correct. After doing so, you then reported to Reese Charrington how you fixed the problem. Yes. It was then when you got a reply email from Reese Charrington himself. Yes. And Jamie Smith is one of your students, correct? Correct. And shortly after spring break, you noticed that Jamie did not have her laptop in class. Yes. Is it also true that Jamie got a frightened look on her face and told you that her laptop may have been stolen? I didn't pay attention to facial expressions, but yes, yeah, she told me that it had been missing or lost. Well, in your statement, you said that she told you it was going, it was, it could have been stolen. Do you remember giving that statement? Yes. And were you truthful when you gave that statement? So, in your statement, you said that it was, she told you it was going to be, it was stolen. It could have been stolen. But now you're saying she told you it was lost? Well, it could have been stolen or it could have been lost. But you only said in your, um, in your statement that it could have been stolen. Yes. 
And then you got a lost laptop form to fill out, and you filled it out. Or you had Jamie sign the form and fill it out, stating that her laptop had been lost or stolen, correct? Correct. And you signed the form as well. Is, is that not true? This is true. Would you recognize a copy of that form? Let the record reflect. I'm approaching the opposing counsel, which has been already admitted into evidence as Exhibit 8. May I approach the witness? You may. Could you look that over for a second? Is this the lost laptop form that you filled out? Yeah, that I had Jane fill out and yeah. Is your name at the bottom of the form? Yes. Underneath Jamie Smith's sing signature, correct? Yes. Is there a separate box for a lost laptop and a stolen laptop? Yes. And which one is marked? Lost. Well, how come you would mark the box lost instead of marking the box stolen like Jamie had told you it was? It was a thought. Like, it could have been, but it wasn't so sure. But Jamie told you that it could have been stolen, but instead of saying that you, it could have been stolen and marking the stolen box, you marked the lost box. Key words could have. It could have been stolen, and she said it could have been stolen. Well, the next day, Jamie... Uh, objection. Uh, Jamie filled out the form, not Sydney. Your response? Your Honor, I believe that it does say in Sydney's statement that Sydney filled out the form and turned it into the ID, IT department. Overruled. Thank you. So the next day, Jamie reported to you that she had found her laptop. Is that correct? Correct. And you further indicated that it had all been a mistake. Is that true? Yes. So you called the IT department and left a message saying that she had found her laptop, and that's all you did. Is that true? Yes. So on April 13th, you were cleaning out computer files when you came across a Facebook page containing images about bombs. Is that true? Yes. You also came across the blog about books and resources for constructing a bomb. Is that true? Yes. You further came across the chat session about bangs. Is that correct? Correct. And you thought the site belonged to Jamie Smith, correct? Correct. And you immediately told the same to the principal. Is that true? Yes. Your statement that all of the images that Hayden Blair eventually came across, you too came across the same material while clearing out those files. Is that correct? Correct. Isn't it true that the principal can asked you to conduct an internal review of both what information may have been stored on the school service and the policies and practices that were in place? Yes. And you reviewed a very large stash of 17,000 images of photos and screenshots and other identifying information. Yes. And that was all forwarded to you from Cool Tech Services? Following your investigation, you found absolutely no evidence that the system was used in any gratuitous way to spy on the staff or students? Well, most of the pictures taken were black because of the laptop being closed. But you still found no evidence in the system that was used to spy on students or staff? Yes or no, please? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Redirect? Yes. Sydney, why did you have to assume what theft track did? Because there wasn't any specific details given about this program. So, the form. There's a, a lost box and a stolen box, uh, a stolen laptop box. Uh, would you say that both make a notification to IT? Yes. Now, did, did Cool Tech have uh, a say in what computer or what pictures were sent? Yes. 
No further questions. Right. Let me step down. Defense may call their first witness. Your Honor, the defense would like to call Reese Charrington to the stand. Ma'am, could you please introduce yourself to the jury? Good afternoon. My name is Reese Charrington. And could you please spell your last name for the court reporter? C-H-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. And where are you employed? I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Lakeshore, and I'm also the Chairman of Cool Tech. And how long have you held these positions? I hold the Lakeshore position since I, I founded it in 1997, and I recently made Cool Tech as a more recent subsidiary of Lakeshore in 2007. What kind of company is Lakeshore? Lakeshore is a tech te technology technology company, and it also makes computers. And where is your headquarters? My headquarters has recently moved here to Carroll County from Orion. Were you ever contacted by anybody regarding the one-to-one -one pro program to give students laptops? Yes, I was contacted by Pat O'Brien and some members of the parent-teacher organization. Did you ever talk to the principal of the high school? Yes, I did. And what happened after that? Um, he offered, he wanted me to bring laptops to the school and I graciously jumped on the offer. I always wanted to give back to the community where I grew up in. And at first he wanted to roll out the program in small increments, like starting off with the staff. But um, I wanted to go all in. I wanted to make sure every student had an opportunity to get a laptop. And how did you go about implementing the program? Um, I had a series of presentations for the staff, the PTO, and the students. What happened at these meetings? Um, these meetings and presentations were to um, discuss the programs that were on the laptops and um, how we we're going to monitor them and make sure that they were not stolen or damaged in any way. Did you ever use the theft track program on any laptops in another school district? Um, yes. In 2009, there was a case where a teacher's laptop was stolen out of her car. Um, using theft track, we managed to track the IP addresses to a place in the Middle East where we found the computer and there was some information on it that could have caused another 9-11. Was theft track installed in the computers that you gave to Western High School? Yes, we figured that we would install it on the computers to make sure that we could protect our investments. And did you offer any IT support for these laptops? Um, yes, through Cool Tech Services we offered IT support for more, tech, for more technical issues while the school itself offered IT support for simpler issues. And did you ever receive a complaint about the green light on the webcam? Yes, we did. And could you explain that? Um, the green light flickering on and off is the computer checking itself, like instant messaging services that use the camera. Sometimes the green light will flicker on and on to make sure it's still working. Are you aware that people were advised to place a piece of duct tape over the camera? Yes, and I also expressed my disdain for this rudimentary fix. And why do you not like this fix? I dislike this fix because it disables a major feature of the theft track program and, it, and my techs can't do their jobs if a computer does get lost or stolen. And how does theft track work? Theft track works by using DNS, DNS um, L, I, LP address and um, screenshot and webcam capabilities to track the computer. And when is theft track activated? Theft track is activated when we get a notification from the school that a computer has been lost or stolen or taken off school grounds without proper insurance filled out. How do you go about tracking a missing laptop? Um, the notification is sent to Cool Tech Services, and my techies um, basically track, turn on theft track and we monitor the computer. And any information we get that is useful to the location of the laptop, we send to the IT department at the school. Any information that is not useful in any way, in any capacity, is deleted. And does a th would a thief know that you were accessing the laptop? No, the thief wouldn't know. Um, any or any like transaction between the two computers or two servers is deleted. And does theft track have the ability to capture video and audio? No, it only has access to still images, and the administrators cannot change when the pictures are taken. They cannot simply take a picture at any time. It's at 15 minute intervals. Is it difficult to monitor all the data you get back? 
Yes, we got a lot of um, requests when we first started the program, a lot more than I anticipated. And how did the employees respond to this? Um, in reality, we didn't have enough employees to monitor everything in a reasonable amount of time. So at first, I authorized overtime, but then I then Hayden Blair came to me and told me that there wasn't enough money to cover everything. So then I suggest the idea of um, community service because I believe that my company company should give more back to the communities that they're based in. And how would a school lap or how would a school contact you about a lost laptop? Um, the IT department would send Cool Tech Services a message, and then they would activate the theft track system. And what would happen after that? Um, Hayden Blair and his techies would monitor pictures from the computer and send pictures that were useful to the IT department or the police if necessary. And um, any, any useless pictures, like black rooms or dark screens, would be deleted. And what would you do once a laptop is located? Um, the IT department would have to send us a notification for us to deactivate the system. What kind of webcam and screenshot pictures were taken by the theft track program? Um, there was a lot, and I personally didn't see the pictures, but Hayden Blair did. And what were your employees supposed to do without, with the unusable photos? The employees were supposed to delete the photos and not keep them. Were there circumstances where worthless photos were kept and not deleted right away? Yes, there was in the incident of Jamie Smith. What happened in the case of Jamie Smith? Um, on March 20th, we got a notification from the school that Jamie Smith's computer was lost or stolen and that we needed to activate theft track to find it. How long was the theft track program initiated on her laptop? It was initiated until April 17th when I got a call from Pat to stop, but what Hayden Blair found on the computer really did disturb me. And did the theft track capture any alarming activity from her computer? Yes, it did. It captured pictures of bomb making materials and IM chat about bombs and just like tons of websites that were used in bomb making. And what happened with Hayden Blair when he found these? Hayden Blair contacted me immediately, and I met him in my office on a Saturday, and we decided to contact Pat O'Brien. And what did you do next? Um, I called Pat O'Brien to tell him about the disturbing information I found, and he told me to forward the um, pictures, which Hayden Blair did while I was talking to him on the phone. And, um, be I asked Pat O'Brien if he wanted me to call the police, but he told me he would handle it. Were you involved in the case in any other way? Um, no, it wasn't until April 17th after I contacted Pat O'Brien that he told me to deactivate theft track. Were you aware of the claims that Hayden Blair was making about extracurricular activities of your employees? Yes, and I'm, I'm aware and I'm very appalled at his actions. He was acting out of the scope of his employment and acting in disregard to the policies I set. Are your employees given policies to follow when they're working from home? Yes, they are. They're only allowed to do tasks that they are suspicious that they are certainly signed to. They can't do anything else. And what guidelines were in place? That they would have to delete any useless photos, not save them, and they would have to forward any information, any useful information, to the IT department. Did you ever receive a complaint about your employees not following the assigned protocol? Yes, I did, and I reacted accordingly by firing Hayden Blair and suspending the rest of the employees. Did you feel that your employees were not following their assigned protocol? They were not following their assigned protocol. They were acting outside the scope of their employment, and therefore I had to punish them accordingly. And how did you feel about that? I felt, I felt like my trust was betrayed, because I, trust, I trusted them well enough to allow them to work at home, allow them to work away from the careful eye of the company. And you know what they did? They spit in my eye. They spit in my eye by doing these horrible things. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Is it true that Pat O'Brien wanted to start the one-to-one -one program in small increments? Yes, but I decided that we would go on and make sure every student had an equal opportunity to get a great laptop. So you just wanted to give everyone computers all at once, correct? Yeah, but we made sure that they had presentations ready to, mm -hmm. to educate students. So therefore, by jumping right in, you never had the chance to work at any glitches in the system, correct? 
There was a, there were other instances where the five track system were used, so. Were there any other incidences in where theft track was used in rural communities? No, but I figured rural communities wouldn't be any different. Is it true that you claim to not know about any of the extracurricular activities regarding your workers filtering through the theft track recovered information? I did not know what Hayden Blair was doing. Also, you said that these extracurricular activities must have taken place when they were off the clock, correct? Yes. These, employ these employees found this information while working as volunteers, correct? Yes, they did. While well, they should have been doing their civic duty to the community. And these volunteers were working for you, though, correct? They're working not just for me, but for the community as well, for the, for the students at Western High School. Thank you. So therefore, whether these volunteers were working on the clock or not, they were still working for you, correct? Not just for me, but the whole entire community. But they were working for you, correct? They were working for Cool Tech Services. Mm-hmm. So therefore, or you testified earlier that you were Chief Executive Officer of Lakeshore Computers and the Chairman of Cool Tech Services, correct? Yes. Um, is it true that you testified earlier that Cool Tech is a more recent corporate entity that you founded in 2009? 2007. With the purpose of it providing advanced technical support for the uses of Lakeshore Computers? Yeah, I founded it as a tech support company. Now, is it true that the definition of entity is something with distinct and independent existence? Yes, but I still was the chairman of that entity. They're connected. So, if you founded Cool Tech as a corporate entity of Lakeshore Computers, then there is no way that they could be the same company, correct? That's the point of having two separate companies. So, they are separate companies? Yes, but I monitor both of them. Isn't it true that Hayden Blair is separately employed with both Lakeshore and Coltec? Yes, he serves two separate jobs for both companies. Isn't it also true that Lakeshore Inc. and Coltec Services are legally and separately incorporated in the state of Superior? Yes, but your client is currently suing both of them. Isn't it also true that there are two defendants here today, Lakeshore and Coltec? Yes. And since Coltec and Lakeshore aren't the same company, then did Jamie Smith ever sign a contract with Cool Tech to giving her the, the right to activate theft track? <sighs> Jamie Smith signed a contract that allowed us to monitor the computers. The computers were not her property, they were property of Lakeshore, and Lakeshore is also, also owns Cool Tech. They're both connected entities, and therefore the contract is related to both of us. Am I correct in saying that earlier you said that they were separate companies? Did you They're not? separate but connected. How is that possible? Because, because Lakeshore owns Cool Tech. It's a subsidiary, meaning that it's an off-branch company. Okay. Um, who is the contract between? The uh, contract for the laptop giving Jamie the laptop. Who is that between? Jamie and Lakeshore, correct? Yes, but Cool Tech is also involved in that contract because they provide IT support for the computers. Am I correct in saying that you claim to have told all the students and staff about the program Theft Track? I told the staff, but I didn't tell the students because I would like to liken this to giving, the, uh, giving your keys to a thief. You wouldn't trust him with that. Your Honor, may I please approach opposing counsel with what has been marked as Exhibit 10? Yes. Permission to approach your witness? Ms. Charrington, can you please read the last paragraph of this email to the courtroom? I mean, just kidding, I have to admit it, sorry. Um, can you please identify what this exhibit is? This is my email to Pat O'Brien and Cindy Appleforth. Do you recognize this? Um, yes, I did. <laughs> Has this been changed, in, changed or altered in any way since you last seen it? Um, no, other than the fact that it's in a printed form. <laughs> okay. Um, Your Honor, we offer exhibit number 10 into evidence that its authenticity has been stipulated. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. You may. I'll receive it. Ms. Charrington, can you please read the last paragraph of this email to the courtroom? We do not 
publicized the capabilities of FEPTRAC for obvious reasons. Telling students how you might track lost or stolen machines would defeat the purpose of the device. If you're controlling someone's machine, you don't want them to know what you're doing. I trust you to keep the specific functionality of FEPTRAC to yourselves and let our expert text handle the situation. No further questions, Your Honor. Permission to approach the witness to get my documents? Okay. Just to redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Charrington, even though your employees are working at home, are there protocols for working for them? Yes, they have under strict policies when they're working at home. And those policies are always in place? Those policies are always in place no matter if they're working volunteer voluntarily or if they're working for monetary compensation. Now, why didn't you give the information about theft track to the students? Because, I, because if they knew, they would react and try to cover things up. They, they would try to cover up the webcam, which would disable a major feature of theft track, and therefore making the technology worthless. Thank you. No further questions. Right, you may step down. Am I allowed to do recross? No. Next witness, please. Oh. <clears throat> Your Honor, the defense would like to call Morgan Parsons to the stand. within the rules of the mock trial tournament. I swear to it. Proceed, ma'am. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Morgan Parsons. Can you please spell your last name for the court reporter? P-A-R-S-O-N-S. Ma'am, where do you currently live? I live at 239 Baller <coughs> Drive. Do you have any children that attend Western High School? I have a daughter named Julia that attends school with Jamie Smith. Have you been involved with the high school in any capacity? I'm an active member in the PTO. Were you involved in bringing up the one-to-one -one laptop program to Western High School? Yes, a group of parents and myself wanted to bring up the program of one-to-one -one laptops. How did you get around the money issue? A former graduate of ours, Reese Charrington, came back when she founded a company and she relocated to Carroll County. How did Reese Charrington feel about this program? She was all for it. She encouraged it. What did you do to help implement the program? We had several sessions to inform the parents of the computers. What meetings did you hold? We held three different meetings for the parents. One was at a noon session, a 6 p.m., and a 10 a.m. session on Saturdays. Did you take attendance at these meetings? No, we did not, but it was extremely well attended. What type of things were discussed at these presentations? We discussed the parental blots and the functions and system that would be downloaded onto the computers. Was there any mention of the insurance plan? Yes, there was. What happened if you did not pay the $60 for the insurance plan? If the student failed to pay the $60, they were not allowed to take the laptop home. What if there was a specific homework assignment that a student needed a laptop for but did not pay the insurance? We would loan them a laptop for the night to finish their assignment. Was there any mention about the theft track system at these meetings? Yes, there was. What were the specifics given by Lake Shore Computers about how the theft track program worked? I don't recall any mention of any outside agencies allowed to monitor on our students, but I do recall one situation where they were able to locate a computer and prevent another 9-11. Did any of the parents ever express concerns over the theft track program and the monitoring of laptops? We had the town crier come and say that the computers were a big brother. When was the program ready to be implemented? After Labor Day. Did you have any more presentations? We had a presentation for the students to inform them. What was contained in the promotional brochure? We informed them about the functions and the system downloads on the computer. Did your daughter ever bring a contract home for you to review and sign? Yes, she did. Was there anything in the, in, um, the contract in the case Lake Shore and Kutuk had the ability to remotely access the laptops? Yes, it did. After receiving all the information, did you sit down with your daughter and discuss the program? Yes, we both sat down to figure out the functions of the computer. Did your daughter fully understand that her computer could be remotely accessed and that the laptop was school property? Yes, she did. In your capacity as a PTO member, have you ever attended a conference regarding web safety? Yes, I have. When your daughter brought home the laptop, did you familiar familiarize yourself with it? Yes, we sat down at the dining room table and familiarized ourselves with the functions of the computer. Did you ever notice any problems with the green lights? I would notice webcam? that it would flicker on and off even when it was not in use. Did your daughter follow up with the teacher? Yes, she followed up with Sydney Ampleforth and put some duct tape on the screen. Do you think the computer company was wrong in monitoring the program? I don't believe the computer company did anything wrong. They informed us that 
the computers were going to be able to be allowed to turn on to check it. Do you think Reese Chollington was wrong to bring the bomb threats to the attention of the principal? No, he was not wrong. We take this situation very seriously and we want to be informed of it. Your Honor, no further questions. Cross examination? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Ms. Parsons, isn't it true that you are currently employed as a realtor? Yes, I am. And wouldn't you agree that it's common knowledge that one of the things families take into consideration when purchasing a home is how good the reputation of the school surrounding that home is? Yes. And today you're testifying alongside Pat O'Brien, the principal of Western High School, correct? Correct. Without Lakeshore Computers, there wouldn't be a one-to-one -one program, would there? Correct. So the reputation of the school is important for you in order to, for you to be successful as a realtor, correct? Isn't it true that as the head of Western High School's parent-teacher organization, you have the responsibility of pri providing students with the best overall learning experience? Correct. You were also a part of the one-to-one -one program since it was just an item on the district's wish list, correct? Yes. Isn't it also true that you became discouraged after doing only a little research about computer programs available to the school? Yes. Isn't it also true that you were surprised by the quickness of the implementation process of the computer program. Yes, I was. And didn't you also admit that because of the quickness of the implementation process, you didn't think there was enough time to think through all the kinks? Correct. Am I correct in saying that you had three different non-mandatory meetings on program information? Yes. Isn't it true that you said these meetings were set up for interested parents? Yes. Was there any attendance taken at these meetings? No, there was no attendance. Isn't it true that students were given brochures with the monitoring notice insert inside? Yes. Isn't it also true that you described this insert as small? Yes. Wouldn't you agree to the possibility of this insert falling out? Can we say that? Wouldn't you agree to the possibility of this insert falling out? Correct. Was there a procedure put in place to guarantee that the monitoring notice would be received by the person responsible for signing the contract? Correct. Was there any procedure in place? Yes. There was? There was. Not. Will you please explain this procedure that guaranteed that the monitoring in no in notice insert would be received by the person signing the contract? Could you restate the question again? I'm sorry. It's okay. Was there, a pr was there any procedure put in place to guarantee that the monitoring notice insert would ever be received by the person responsible for signing the contract. I'm sorry, but I don't recall. You don't recall? I don't recall. Well, there wasn't. The other person you're testifying alongside of today is Reese Charrington, the CEO of Lakeshore Computers and cool t chairman of Cool Tech Services, correct? Yes. Isn't it true that you don't think too highly of Reese Charrington? Correct. And you called him, you called her a geek? Correct? Yes. And do you consider this an endearing term, Ms. Parsons? Yes. You do? You also joked about the fact that she was building computers in her barn, correct? Yes. You also claim to have not remembered Reese at all from high school, correct? Yes. So even though you didn't particularly like or respect Ms. Charrington, you were willing to accept her Trojan horse theft track in order for Western High School to be the first rural school with such a program, correct? Yes. Isn't it true that you were given private briefings about the one-to-one -one program as well? Yes. And you stated that at these meetings there was little, if any, mention of privacy concerns or monitoring, correct? Correct. But the IT presenters at these briefings so generously put any monitoring concerns at ease, didn't they? Yes. And these presenters only claimed theft recovery as they called it, would simply turn on the laptops, correct? Yes. But it did more than that, didn't it? In fact, do you remember a story relating to theft recovery that was told to you? I recall this one time they were telling me it was re located to prevent another 9-11. So you would be fully capable of describing the specifics of how they track laptops, correct, if you remember the story? Yes. If I remembered the story, then yes. If you remembered the story, so you don't remember the story? I do not recall it. Okay. So what you're saying is that you were distracted by this story so much
that by the end of it, you still had no idea of the specific functionality of the theft recovery program. Do you recall a parent expressing concern about the monitoring of students using the computers outside of school? I believe you called him the town crier. Yes. And you also state that he did not garner much sympathy for his concern, correct? Correct. In fact, you even related his complaints to that of the boy who cried wolf, correct? Yes, I did. But at the end of the boy who cried wolf, they were right, weren't they? Yes, they were. So what you're saying is, when someone expressed their genuine concern for the outside monitoring of students, you immediately dismiss these concerns? Can you restate that again? When someone expressed their genuine concern for the outside monitoring of the students, you immediately dismiss these concerns? Yes, I did. Did you investigate these concerns? No, I didn't. In fact, you yourself had some concerns about the green flashing light on your daughter's laptop, correct? Yes, I did. In fact, you were so concerned that you even encouraged your daughter to get advice about the light from one of the plaintiff witnesses, Sydney Ampleforth, correct? Yes. So you took the advice she gave you, and you placed a piece of duct tape over the webcam, correct? Yes, we did. So the real reason that it isn't your daughter sitting in the plaintiff's chair is because you covered up the webcam, correct? Correct. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Redirect. No, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please introduce yourself to the jury? Good morning. Or good afternoon. My name is Pat O'Brien. And could you please spell your name for the court reporter? O apostrophe B R I E N. Are you currently employed? Yes, I'm the pre or principal at Lakeshore High School or Do Western High School. Sorry. Okay. Do you have a college degree? Yes, I have an undergraduate degree from Superior State University. I have a master's degree in educational advision and I have a mat or doctorate in um, educational supervision all from Superior State or University of Superior. Did you work hard to bring laptops to Western High School? Yeah, ever since I started working at Western I wanted to have laptops there but they always said Western wasn't the right place. And when did your dream become a reality? When Reese Charrington moved back to town and decided to relocate her computer empire. What was the main reason you did not have laptops at your school? Money. We didn't have enough money. So what did you do? So me and a group of people made up of the school board president and the PTO representative decided to ask Mrs. Charrington about um, a program that she could help us get computers in our school. Was Mrs. Charrington receptive to this idea? Yeah, she was actually very receptive. She decided to give every student in our school a laptop. And how many does your how many students does your school have? We have 563 students in our school, but including staff and faculty, we contracted 675 laptops. And she gave this all to you for free? Yes. What kind of software was put in these computers? They're all current software, and they included parental so um, blocks, so you couldn't go to any inappropriate sites. Was there anything else installed in these computers? Yes, there was a threat track program installed, and it could locate if a computer was lost or stolen. Did you have a plan that allowed the students to take the laptops home with them? Yes, if they had an insurance, if they paid an insurance fee, then they could take the laptop home on a regular basis. And how much was this insurance fee? Sixty dollars for an, to take the laptop home on a regular basis. Was the company making any money off this? No, it was. They didn't want to make a profit off of a public school. And what did you offer for the students that could not afford the $60 fee? If the students were part of our program of free or reduced lunch, they were they did not have to pay the $60 fee. Was this one-to-one -one program well received among the students and faculty? Yes, we talked to the PTO, we talked to um, the school board, and they were all enthused. Did you do anything to educate the faculty, the students, and the staff about this? Yes, the PTO made forums <clears throat> and um, the 
the IT tech staff decided that they would um, work together with the computer company and they would learn the basic laptop. Did you send anything home? Yes, we sent home brochures for the parents to look at and the students. More, were there any contracts? Yes, there were a contract. If we had a signed contract, then it meant you received a laptop and if there was a sixty dollar if there was sixty dollars then you could take the laptop home. Was there a consistent theme to these brochures and contracts? Yes, we wanted everybody to know that if it was school's property, not anyone else's. Did you have re any receive any questions from parents or, or students regarding the various aspects of this? Some people asked about a green flickering light. And who would be responsible for addressing these questions? The IT staff, the IT staff at our school would address the questions, and if they couldn't answer them, then they would ask the computer tech. Did you ever establish a policy between your IT, um, your IT technical support people, and um, if anything, or if any students had any questions regarding the security? Wait, let me say that. Um, did you ever establish a policy with the IT people um, regarding any computers that were reported stolen or lost? If there was a computer reported stolen or lost, they would have to. The student or teacher would have to fill out a, a form, and um, we, our IT tech person, supervisor, would call the track program. What happened if the computer was taken home without the proper insurance? Then we would call the theft track people and not ask them to no like begin theft track, but we would have them like watch the computer to make sure enough it wasn't being misused. So once it was reported lost or stolen, that track would be activated, correct? Yes. What did Cool Tech do once you notified them? They would turn on that track and they would go and they would just turn on that track. How many times did you have to contact the local police this year? In the first six months, we would have several seven occasions that we had to contact the police, but in every other instance, we found the computers ourselves. What did you do when the computers were located? We would call theft track and we would notify them that we found the computers as soon as we got them in hand. We would not call them if we didn't have the laptops yet. So as soon as you found out you had the laptops, you would immediately notify Cool Tech and their services? Yes. As it relates to Jamie Smith, how many times was theft track um, program activated? On at least four occasions because she kept taking the laptop home without the insurance paid. Besides taking the laptop home without the proper insurance, was there any time that the theft track system would have been activated other than that? Yes, when she lied and told Mrs. Ampleforth that she lost the computer or it was, might have been stolen when she knew exactly where it was. When was the last time the theft track system was activated on Jamie Smith's computer? March 20th when she told that Mrs. Ampleforth that her computer might be lost or stolen. Why was this concerning? Because <clears throat> we found on April 13th that a Facebook page Mrs. Ampleforth found was um, there was a Facebook page bookmarked and it might have wep like it might have weapons and when we tried to refresh the page to see whose it was it was gone. Had you any ha had you had any problems during the school year regarding security of the students? Yes, we had bomb threats at least four times called in the school. And what did you do to address these bomb threats? We. We closed school and we called the cops and made sure that they were all, or, and made sure there was nothing in the school. Did Ms. Ambleforth ever relay to you the information of who could be the possible perpetrator to these? Yes, yeah, she told us that it might, uh, it might have been, um, it might have been um, Jamie Smith. And did anything else materialize on her computer? Um, yes. Uh, the next day, April 14th, I got a call from Reese Charrington saying that he found bomb pictures in her, on her file. What did you do with that information? I waited until, um, I waited until April 16th, and when I seen her at school, I waited until no one was around her, and I asked her to come with me to the office. And what did you do when you got to the office? I asked her to, if I could search her bag and her jacket and her locker. Had you shown her anything? Yes, I showed her pictures I laid out of her IMs with her friend and a picture of the bomb she had on her desk. What were the pictures of? There was a picture of her desk filled with bomb paraphernalia and there was um, a chat, like a group message with her friend Petey and about talking about the big bag and events. And how had Jamie reacted? 
when I told her that I found this, she looked at me and said, gotcha. And then what happened? I asked her if she was the person who called in the bomb, the bomb, potential bomb threats before. Was she shocked? She was wondering why, or she asked me, sorry, she said that she had been waiting, she knew someone would have been watching her the whole time that she, ever since she got the laptop. What did you do next? I, wait, let me repeat the question. What did you do after that you found out that Jamie have, had been the one that was messing around with the um, paraphernalia? I told her I wouldn't call the cops and that I would, um, I wouldn't press any criminal charges. Had you found any evidence in her locker or in her coat? No, I did not. Had the lawsuit directed at you personally been resolved? Yes, and out of, out of court. Did you make any changes to the laptop program? Yes, we decided to cut all ties with um, Cool Tech, and we decided to go to Awesome Tech. Thank you. No further questions. <clears throat> Pat, you were proud of establishing this program. Yes. As you should be. When you researched laptop <coughs> programs in schools, you found that it worked well in urban areas, correct? Yes. Uh, this research, okay. Uh, what, ki what kind of a school is Western High? It's a rural school, but I didn't think that just because people live in a rural area <laughs> that they shouldn't be able to have the same educational experience as someone who lives in a affluent area. Of course, but uh, you had no blueprint for this kind of program? No. For in a, in a rural area? <clears throat> And to make sure this program got off the launch pad and to lock down these computers, uh, you were willing to do just about anything, weren't you? I would go to a, a level. Understandable. Uh, and you were willing to allow theft track to be installed on the 675 laptops given to students and staff at your school? Yes. Uh, and you knew that Lakeshore Computers just wanted to give you the free laptops so that they could field test in greater numbers? Yes. Now, couldn't you start off with a small group of computers and still like, lock down the computers? Well, I didn't want to just keep it into one small space. I, if we could get what we ha got, then I would still do it. But at first you wanted to do a small test? Yes, but I'm glad that she wanted to do a one-to-one -one program. But it, you would still be able to get all of the computers if you did a small group? I don't time. know. We didn't. We didn't ever talk about a small group. Okay. Uh, you were. You were working not only with Lakeshore, but also Cool Tech, their subsidiary, correct? Yes. So you needed a totally different company to activate Theft Track. Well, they're the same company, but two different branches. Yes. You notified Cool Tech to activate uh, Theft Track four times, correct? On. Jamie Smith's computer? Yes. Uh, isn't it a fact that you were sure that Jamie Smith's computer was at the Smith residence? Well, not every time. After we checked, after we made sure that it was there, then we would shut off the program. But before we weren't sure we, it was at their house. Of course, but uh, eventually you were sure that it was at the Smith residence? Yes, and then we would shut it off, or call them to shut it off. Well, why didn't, why didn't you contact Jamie to get her to keep the laptop at school? Why didn't we? Yes. Well, it wasn't, she was supposed to keep it at school. She was supposed to check it in every afternoon. But you didn't contact her? No, we did not. Now, when you had evidence of Jamie's bomb making plan, you waited for her in front of your office, correct? Yes. When you searched her backpack and her locker, you found no evidence of bomb making materials, correct? No, I did not. No further questions. Is the safety and security of your students and faculty at your school very important to you? It is the top priority. Thank you. No further questions.
minutes of this in this case is completed, and we'll move to uh, closing argument. So, if you may give your closing argument. Thank you, Anna. May I request to have one more, one minute, one minute, please? Yep. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Did you see that? Did you see how easily the insert to my paper slipped out? Interesting. Keep in mind, members of the jury, that this very same thing most likely happened to our client. In this case, with the monitoring notice insert. I, Gwen Allen, along with my co-counsel, recognize that the plaintiff has the burden of proof in this case. It is our job to prove to you, the members of the jury, beyond the preponderance of the evidence, the two counts in which the defendants, Lakeshore and Cooltech, the two separate defendants, were so rightfully charged with. Count one, of it, which is intrusion upon seclusion. If spying on Jamie without her knowledge through a webcam in her own bedroom doesn't describe inclusion, intrusion upon seclusion, I'm not sure anything does. Count two is the eavesdropping violation, which clearly states that the plaintiff had an expectation of privacy and conducted their conversations under circumstances justifying that expectation. Also, in addition to monitoring and intercepting the plaintiff's conversations, Lakeshore and Cooltech knowingly aided its own employees in doing the same. Today, the plaintiff has proved both of these counts, enough to tip the scale, and I would hope that you jurors would agree. There's an old saying, if you can't convince them, confuse them. Members of the jury, this is exactly what the defense has done to you today. I ask that you listen to the facts and what Jamie has told you about how everywhere she goes, she feels like people are laughing at her and how she will never feel safe again. Today, you have heard from Jamie Smith, who stated that she has been damaged by this event and she doesn't know how many people on the street could have been the over 800 employees of Cool Tech Services that were allowed into her bedroom through their Trojan horse theft track. She also stated that nowhere in the contract that she signed did it mention that a program known as theft track would be activated. You also heard from Sydney Ampleforth, who stated that she talked to Pat and Reese multiple times about her concerns from the very beginning, and they did nothing of these concerns. He's off, you've also heard from Hayden Blair, who talked about the peep shows and how they gave out rewards for the humiliation and exposure of these pictures. You've also heard from Reese Charrington today state that the two companies are separate but connected. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit of an oxymoron. In fact, you've heard Reese Charrington state today that the addition of Cool Tech was in fact in 2007 when it was in 2009. Clearly, Reese Charrington has some witness statements to look over. She also claimed that other Hayden Blair and other employees spit in her eye. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't recall this in the case materials. Uh, in the brochure, it states, more innovation per bite is the slogan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, I think we've proven that, in fact, there's more bark than their bite. Um, they allowed Theft Track to enter into the homes of several students, not just Jamie's. Jamie's the only one that has spoken up about it. You've also heard from Pat O'Brien about the quickness of the implementation program and how they wanted to start out small, but they went all in. And in fact, they had no blueprint to go off of for their particular school. You've also heard from Morgan Parsons today, um, who's only defending the computer company and the school for their own selfish reasons. His su their success as a realtor depends on the reputation of the school. They also ignored the parents' concerns, or the town crier, and immediately dismissed these concerns, and also compared them to the boy who cried wolf when they themselves had concerns about the flashing light. Uh, in the end of The Boy Who Cried Wolf, the person was actually right, when it and nobody believed them when it really mattered. 
Members of the jury, we've got to face the facts. Today, we've heard on both sides that the monitoring did not stop until told to do so, which was not until long after Jamie had informed a staff member that her laptop was no longer missing. Jamie's privacy was invaded. Today, the plaintiff has proved their burden through both counts and through the scopes of both plaintiff and defense witnesses. And we hope that you would find there be no other finding than that of liable on the counts Lakeshore and Kultek have been rightfully charged. We would also like monetary compensation Sorry. to put Jamie through college and therapy. Thank you. John F. Kennedy, when responding to the Soviet Union's ultimatum that the Western powers leave the city of Berlin in 1961, said, we cannot negotiate with people who say what's mine is mine and what's yours is negotiable. Plaintiff takes a similar position today. Plaintiff feels that this laptop you gave me is now mine. And the terms that you gave me regarding the use of it, well, those are negotiable. Plaintiff was free to purchase her own laptop, but she did not. She could have paid a mere $60 on the insurance fee, and she would have been able to take it home every night. But she didn't. She defends this by saying, well, the other students did this too, and they modified them. Well, where are those other students? The plaintiff today has the burden of proof, and these students, those, they aren't here. That said, I think we should point out who is here. Jamie is here. But Jamie, as we said in our opening, represents Jamie. She does not represent the PTO, the Board of Education, or the parents of the students at the school. Nor does she represent the students at the school. And none of them are suing. The evidence showed that Jamie went to the mandatory meetings. But she didn't pay attention to them. She was handed a copy of the lease agreement, but she didn't bother to read through it or understand it. She was told to give that lease agreement to her parents to sign, but she didn't, and she signed it herself. Then Jamie immediately took the laptop home with her and modified it so she could get her webcam up and running and all her social networking stuff on her computer. The evidence also showed that she refused to pay the $60 that she knew she had to pay in order to take that laptop home. Now, all of these facts are important because if Jamie would have just followed the rules, we wouldn't be here today. The theft track program would never have been activated on her computer. In our opening, we indicated that the judge would tell you that the law states there are three defenses to the plaintiff's case today. And if we prove any of these three defenses by a preponderance of evidence, then you would have to come, you would have to find that the plaintiff, by law, has no cause of action here. What is a preponderance of evidence? Well, the judge will tell you. He will tell you it's significantly less than reasonable doubt. It's simply more likely than not. A slight tipping of the scales, 51% to 49%, is a preponderance of evidence. The first offense is the most obvious. It reads, if you find by a preponderance of evidence that the plaintiff's actions cause the actual harm in this case, your verdict will be for the defense. To put in layman's terms, you cannot sue for something that you caused. So the question that needs to be asked when you go back to deliberate is, did Jamie cause the theft track system to be activated because she didn't follow the rules? And if the answer to that question is yes, then you must return a verdict in favor of Lakeshore. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the evidence shown today showed that the answer to that question is yes. The second defense states, plaintiff consented to the defendant's interception of communication from her laptop. She concocted a bomb threat to grab everybody's attention. She wanted everybody who was on the other side to watch. She wanted them to notice. The third defense is that the judge, the judge will instruct you on is that a corporation is liable for the wrongful acts of an employee if the acts are in the scope of their employment. Hayden acts exceeded the scope of his employment. 
Hayden Blair was instructed to sort through all of the data and all of the useful data and all of the things that weren't useful were to be deleted immediately. When Reese found out that, Reece, that Hayden was saving the images for a little contest, she fired him. She fired him because his acts were outside of the scope of his employment. Common sense often makes good law. And common sense today tells us that Lakeshore is not responsible for Jamie's claims. Law reinforces this logic. You've heard the plaintiff ask the jury for, for justice in this case. But justice <coughs> is just fairness. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that as you go back to deliberate and you ask your question, is it fair that Jamie broke the rules and is now suing a company that at its core just wanted to, stay, to help the Time. students? Thank you. No. That concludes the uh, trial in this case. And the judges and I will go into the jury room and address our scoring. We'll come back to you some time. All right, please. Start with the bailiff. Uh, three things, real quick. After today, I don't know. Peeps were my favorite candy. I don't know what your kids are doing with peeps now. Uh, second thing, how many seniors do I have? How many years have you big guys been doing this? A couple? Three? Thank you for doing it two years. Hopefully, you get to do something in college. Do this part. Use this as an experience. It goes a long ways. Way back when, when most of us were in high school, we didn't have nothing like this. This is this is a experience that you guys can take and use. That's not in our field, any field you do, as you can tell. It's how you present yourself, acting, anything. Third thing, Jamie, good job. Everything doesn't go as planned. Um, I have a job that doesn't go as planned. He has a job that doesn't go as planned. Every day is different. You got through it, you took some deep breaths. I commend you for that. Okay? Good job. The rest of the way, guys. Sure. All done, so you can all take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, well well done, ladies. This is I think the first two all girl teams I've seen today. So that was that was kind of cool in here. Um, a couple things. As a non-lawyer, my, my point of view is from the witness chair, because that's where I spend my time on the witness chair. So I, I really like to evaluate the witnesses and, and how they're testifying. And um, one of the things I preached to the first two sessions today was not to over-answer questions, not to add more than you should. And if you were the one asking the questions, you shut them down. Well, today, I saw that, and I was, I was real impressed. Um, Annie Marie Taylor, um, one of your uh, uh, defendants on there, asked a question, you're like, yes or no answer. Mm -hmm. Shut them down. That was perfect. I talked about that all morning. I was, I was happy to see that. You don't let somebody get out something more than what you want because they'll water down your answer. So that was, that was very well done. Um, Savannah, I thought the, uh, the peep show, it, it took me the first two to understand they were even talking about the candies. <laughs> that, that made sense. You really explained it well. I thought you did a really nice job on that. Um, uh, is it Elena? Ayla. Ayla. Um, very good as well as uh, shutting down uh, Savannah's extra answer. She was answering more, trying to get it out. She had more to say, and you were like, no way. You're not, you're not going to get that out in front of the jury. So uh, very good. Gabby, um, good lack of foundation question. Nice closing. Um, 
Grace, um, I, I like the uh, analogy, uh, my employee spit in my eye. I mean, uh, it uh, kind of hit home what happened when you explained it like that. They were under your command and uh, they violated the rules and we, we, uh, we discharged them. So we did good. Um, in the end of the day, this is, uh, this is meant to be fun. We know how much time and effort goes into this. Everybody did good. You should be all proud of yourselves. Congratulations. Ms. Kerr? Well done to both teams on completing the final round. I think everyone probably feels better now. Um, I really was impressed with cross-exam in this group. You guys did not let your witnesses explain away what you wanted. You had yes, no, and you cut them off, and you kept your point, so they couldn't explain it away to the jury. So well done with that. Um, I, I'm going to address one thing, and, and this is constructive criticism for both teams, and this is so when you advance, it does not hurt you. Um, I was extremely, extremely distracted, particularly by plaintiff's counsel. Um, I counted 29 different conversations in less than 20 minutes at the counsel table. That's taking away from the other team, and it's also taking away from your case. It's really hard to stay focused when you guys are fiddling about or talking. I counted you guys did it twice. Um, I know it's difficult to sit sometimes and that you guys need to share information about your case. You're trying to remind a coworker. So for future cases, have a scrap piece of paper between each person and write a note. Um, that way judges don't get distracted. They don't miss something that's important, especially if it's in regards to your case because you don't want to lose points for them missing it because of you guys are just trying to help each other. Um, other than that, I was very impressed with the courtroom decorum entering exhibits, and I thought you guys, I'm really, really impressed with cross-exam, and I think you guys have that down pack, so good job. Mr. Stringers. Uh, thank you, Judge Brown. Congratulations, your first trial. And back in the jury room, we were kind of laminating about our first trial, and I know you guys probably didn't sleep last night. And when we have a trial, we don't sleep quite often. It, it's just it's just that you want to do a good job and you have clients you believe in and you want to do what you're paid to do and your professionalism so congratulations on that a uh, couple comments from my notes Jamie you, you did let your nerves get to you and I can't tell you how many times my nerves have gotten to me I, I fell in court one time and my file went flying the bailiffs had to help me out but you had the ability to bounce back and you did and that's really what it's all about so you know, really great job there um, Jennifer, I was really impressed because you had to take a witness out of order. That's not easy. But when the judge says, call your next witness, we're not calling them in the order you want to, you prepared in a different order. And you did that without hesitation, without even a, a glimpse of stopping. You, and you took the next witness as a judge ordered. It was wonderful. Um, Gwen, you did a great job. There was an objection. And I was so impressed with your ability to know the rules of evidence, because the objection was uh, hearsay. And you said, Your Honor, I'm not eliciting a statement. And then you said, I'm also not, I'm not offering it, uh, the statement, to prove the matter asserted. Judge Brown, you made his job easy, overruled, and you went on. That was a really, showed me how prepared you were um, on that hearsay objection, which hearsay is a very difficult concept uh, to grasp. I, too, as Ms. Kern stated, was very impressed with cross-examination. Ms. Starr and Ms. Flynn, your examinations were very professional. I thought I was watching two you know, seasoned attorneys up there because you don't get facts. It's not like TV. You're not going to get, you never hardly ever get a witness to say something that's new or just slam your case and just fantastic, but you just were methodical and you kept hitting it and you hit your points and you did a wonderful job. Um, and Grace McKee, you, you were a fantastic witness. Really, really, really were. I was so impressed with your ability as a witness. You were so convincing. You made lemonade out of lemons. Because if I, I love cross-exam. That's what I like to do when I do trials. And I would be afraid of you, I think, a little bit. <laughs> because you, you, you really did. You were so professional. And defense in this case, I think, is a tough case. Because my first question to you would be, what makes you think you can violate the privacy rights of high school students? I'm not sure I'd like the answer, 
because you might have turned that back on me, and you did a really, really excellent job at that. So that, that's some of my uh, comments. The closings were very good. I enjoyed the closings. You guys did a great job. You had good use of the exhibits. Uh, offering exhibits into evidence is a difficult prospect, but you guys, you had no problems there, so uh, congratulations. And I will uh, echo a lot of what the uh, judges here have said to you. First of all, um, I know, as I mentioned to you when we started, my, my whole career has been in the courtroom. So I can tell you that when I was a trial lawyer, I don't care how many years I had on my belt, when I walked in to try a case, I was nervous until I started asking the first question or started talking to the jury. Once the gavel went down, those nerves went away. But, but getting to that point, you're nervous because you know how important it is. You know that you, people are counting on you and all of this. And this, nothing's changed with you either. Even though you're not really representing a client, you're in here performing. You're performing before your peers, your parents. In this case, you're on camera. Um, so. It's, it is stressful. It's a very stressful job. It's a very stressful environment. Um, I don't know whether it's me or not, but I make lawyers nervous. So, uh, Ms. Kern's over there shaking her head. So, I, it, it, uh, and it's not that I do anything drastic with them, but I expect that my, it's to my demeanor about on the bench. And, and, and people know that when they walk in front of me. I hope that wasn't me with, with you, Jamie. <laughs> but, I know the stress that, that you're under, all of it. So it is a, um, I, I agree with what Mr. Stremmer said. I was very impressed with how you pulled yourself together and went forward. The, uh, and you did a good job. The, Ava? Okay, I wasn't quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, in your opening statement, you did very well identifying uh, your affirmative defenses. These are what, this is what we're going to be able to show you, is that um, our employee acted outside the scope of his employment, which is, which is very important. I mean, that's part of your whole theory. The, um, Jennifer, good, good job uh, direct, uh, drawing out uh, the testimony about the party. The party uh, and put an emphasis on it. Now, I would ex I expected the defense to say, well, that's outside the scope, but that's an important aspect about the privacy issue. And they're out there having a good time at the expense of your client, and you you brought that out. It's very good. Um, Anne Marie, um, your I agree with the sheriff. Your holding the witness to a yes or no, and that's all that was required to answer the question, and not allowing them to elaborate was very good. In redirect, um, Jennifer, though, followed up by asking the questions that you wouldn't let her a answer. So you both did good in that. Um, you wouldn't let the answer, but when she had her opportunity again, she asked the question that you wouldn't allow the answer to. So she did very well in, about bringing that out. So you both did excellent. And, uh, the, um, Gwen, I, I, uh, there's two instances when you were testifying instead of asking questions. One was in your direct uh, question when you made a comment. Well, that is generous of Lakeshore to give you a laptop. That's a statement. It's not a question. And it's not allowed in a, in a courtroom. And then in your closing argument, uh, you indicated that uh, Cool Tech was organized in 2007. Was somebody, somebody or the witness said it was organized in 2007, when in reality it was 2009. There's nothing in the evidence that shows it was 2009. It's in the statement, but the witness never said that. So you can't comment on it in your closing. What you should have, what you might think about doing next time, is that when the witness says no, it's 2007, show her own statement that said it was 2009. Get her to admit, well, I guess I was wrong. It's 2009. Then you can not only comment on it, but you can show that the witness didn't even know about her own company. So you can challenge that type of, of comments. I don't know whether it was 2009 or not. I don't, I don't remember reading the statement one way or the other. But if that's what you wanted to show, 
then you had to go about it a different way. But your closing argument was good. I agree your handling of that objection, the hearsay objection. You, you're the first person today, frankly, that uh, responded to a hearsay objection by saying, I'm, it's not offered to me for the truth of the matter, sir. That means it's not hearsay. And uh, I might have disagreed with you, but in this case I didn't. So I, I uh, uh, sustained your objection. The, let's see. I know you told me your name, now I forgot it. Ayla? Ayla. Uh, I've got written down here two good objections. Good job keeping the witnesses uh, to answering the questions only. And, and you, uh, Savannah, you were appropriately offended. Where are you? You were appropriately offended in your testimony. Um, I, I've got to tell you that was uh, a good job testifying. Um, for all of you witnesses back there, you've got the toughest job in this in, in this proceed in this whole thing, because these aren't your own memories you're testifying about. It's not something you saw or heard that makes it easy to remember. This is something you read. And you might have prepared for it, but the only way you can prepare is by knowing what your own lawyers are going to ask you. You can't prepare for cross-examination because you don't know what they're going to ask you. So you've got to know this, um, your role inside and out. And, you, and because of that, you're in the, probably the toughest position here um, to be able to handle that. And you did it very well. All of you did very well on that. Um, Jamie, um, you offered your witness as an expert witness. Expert witnesses are um, really pre people who have no knowledge about the incident itself, but are called in order to and, and made experts by virtue of their experience or education for purposes of giving opinion testimony. What you were doing was calling your witness because she was involved in this, so she wasn't being called as an expert to begin with. You're able to elicit her expertise in certain areas, but you can't. I can't make her an expert witness. And I think, um, Gabby, it was you that was, I think you were surprised by that. And, but you handled it very well. Um, and that's what you have to do when you're, uh, when you're a lawyer, is you have to be on your toes all the time because you never know what's going to come at you. So you have to be able to think on your feet. Uh, Jamie did a good job of bringing out the 40% issue. You know, 40%. Uh, but what I was hoping to see is that that 40% from the other side would have been stressed to be beyond the scope of the employment. Um, Gabby, you did a really good job in your cross-examination when you, it was kind of a curve thrown to you uh, when she said uh, about the testing of this. And you said, well, you're a teacher. You test, don't you? You test in your classroom, don't you, for things you taught, you teach? I mean, that's not in the materials anywhere. That came from you. And that's thinking on your feet. And you did a very good job with that um, on how to handle that. One of the things that uh, was not uh, from the defense standpoint, not only you, but all three of the cases I heard today, the teams I heard today, nobody really stressed the idea that um, we're, the company policy, and this would have, should have been done through Reese Char uh, Charles, uh, Char Charrington, the company owner, when he's talking about their policies, nobody ever really stressed that the only, way, the only time those, that's ever activated is when they're told that the computer was stolen or lost. And so, we don't activate it, you know, our policy isn't to activate it while a student just has it. It's only if it's stolen, and then we activate it. And what, what privacy rights does a thief have, or if it's lost? So nobody really s stressed that, that that was the focus of our, of our um, company policy. So anything beyond that is beyond the scope of that <coughs> policy. And nobody pointed that out. Uh, so I would recommend that you might consider thinking about that. Um, Jennifer, good, good cross uh, on the signing of the contract 
as Cool Tech, trying to separate the, the two, that she never really signed a contract with Cool Tech, but Grace handled it very well. And she came back at you uh, with that. So it was a, it was a good uh, tactic, but the witness uh, handled it pretty well. So it was all... Uh... All right, one other thing that I did want to mention um, is that, and it was, this was brought up when we were in the room in here uh, by some of the other judges. Although there, in, the, in the rules here, there is nothing um, that says you're not supposed to have uh, computers or technology at your table, both teams had tablets. And when you, um, we as judges don't know if you're receiving information from, or coaching from the back of the room and receiving that sort of thing. So even though you're probably not, and I, I'm sure that you weren't, it, when you move on to another uh, venue for this, be careful with that because somebody's liable to call you on it. Because there is a rule against improper coaching. And because that ha has the capability of receiving coaching materials from somebody who is not a team uh, member here, uh, there's an appearance that it's improper. So. Kind of keep that in mind. Put those things away. Use your notes uh, on your paper. Um, congratulations to all of you for uh, an effort in this thing, in this uh, event that uh, I know is challenging, and you all stood up to that challenge, and uh, you should be proud of yourselves. We're proud of you. I mean, we're glad that you're part of our community. So we're done.